Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about iron deficiency anemia, some of the signs and symptoms, what are some of the causes, and then in part two, we're going to go over the differential labs that can diagnose you with iron deficiency, as well as going over remedies, treatment options uh, that are available to improve iron levels for yourself. Okay, so we're going to go right into it. Let's go into iron deficiency anemia, hair loss, fatigue, etc. Right? There are a lot of signs and symptoms for iron deficiency anemia. So, what are some of the reasons why someone who uh, may be iron deficient? One is the lack of intake or the lack of absorption of iron. So, you might be taking in a, a iron but not absorbing it correctly, or you might be lacking the amount of iron that is necessary. So, number one is malabsorption. Why would we have malabsorption, right? Some disease process or autoimmune processes will damage our gut lining to the point where it does not absorb nutrients very well, iron being one of them. So when we look at things like Crohn's disease, irritable bowel disease, celiac disease, or even ulcerative colitis, you're going to have malabsorption of nutrients and you can develop iron deficiency anemia because iron is one of those things that's necessary for proper oxygenation, right? Another is antacids. So antacid use is very high here in the United States. Whenever you have a reflux sign or burning, they give you an antacid. But what patients don't really realize is that antacids should be used short term, not long term. So sometimes patients come in and they're on antacids for two years, three years, even 10 years. So why is antacids creating malabsorption? Basically, you need stomach acid to break down your foods, right? Your fats, your proteins, your carbohydrates. If you cannot break down your fats and carbohydrates, etc., and the acid that you need is lowered because of antacids, then you will not break down the components and not absorb it correctly. So you may lack B vitamins, you may like, uh, lack iron, right? So antacid will create malabsorption of your nutrients. Other things that are surgeries, right? Surgeries like gastric bypass or small bowel uh, dissection because of, let's say, Crohn's disease. So definitely surgical procedures can contribute to malabsorption syndromes. The other is consumption is low or low consumption. What that means is for a lot of children here in the United States, they grow up on cow's milk. And what happens is rather than eating food as they get a little older, right, they start to just drink milk, like four, five, six, seven bottles a day. And they're getting the calorie intake. They're getting the vitamin D and, um, and calcium but they're not getting their iron, right? So kids who drink a lot of cow's milk can develop uh, iron deficiency. Now, it, cow's milk is very different from breast milk, where breast milk would provide all the necessary uh, ingredients or nutrition for the child. But as they start to wean off and they're on cow's milk uh, for a long period of time, they will develop iron deficiency. The other one is vegans and vegetarians. And we're going to discuss this in detail next time. But basically, vegetarians and vegans, uh, they're taking in non-heme uh, iron, basically, right? And it doesn't absorb as well as animal-based products, such as red meat or even seafood, etc. So vegans and vegetarians are notoriously uh, low on iron and B12 and B9, etc. So it's very important for vegetarians and vegans to check their iron levels correctly and then uh, supplement as necessary, okay? So there's another reason is loss of iron, right? We call it hemolysis or uh, hemorrhagia. Basically, you are either breaking down your red blood cells too quickly or you're losing your blood somewhere, okay? Here are the causes. Heavy menstruation. So when women get into the age where they're menstruating, about 10% of those people will actually develop iron deficiency, right? Because of irregular menstruation, heavy menstruation, 
right? Uh, endometriosis is another reason. Uh, large hemorrhoids or uh, uh, multiple hemorrhoids that cause a lot of bleeding can lead to anemia. GI bleeds. So GI bleeds can occur due to ulcers, right? Or like things like varus esophagus, which starts to erode things. But um, NSAID usage, right? Pain medications, aspirins, uh, ibuprofens, right? They can cause damage to the GI lining if you're using it for long periods of time. And then it would have a slow GI bleed that you are unaware of and lose iron, right? Also cancers, nosebleeds. So people who get frequent nosebleeds uh, for whatever reason uh, will tend to develop some uh, form of iron deficiency. Another one uh, that people don't really realize is that urinary loss. People have blood in their urine, they don't realize that, right? It could be from a bladder infection or a small kidney infection. Uh, so you could lose blood in the urine, so you should check your urine um, to see if there's any blood loss and make sure to rule these things out. Increased use of iron, right? So when we have um, child development, as you're growing rapidly, you're gonna use more iron, right? Because you need to grow. So growth and development is a big thing. And also when the mother gets pregnant. So the mother is providing the baby or the fetus with all this nutrients. And basically you're feeding two people. And if the mother is not uh, on a proper diet uh, and they're not uh, supplementing at times, especially in the third trimester of pregnancy, they can be iron deficient. Another one here is increased usage. Now, now this could be somewhere else over here, but parasites. People don't realize that parasites love iron. They can also create a little bit of bleeding or ulcers. So let's say H. pylori, helicobacter pylori. If you have a H. pylori infection that's significant enough in your stomach, you can create ulcers causing a GI bleed. And two, H. pylori likes iron. So you have a double whammy in there, right? And then if you have GI symptoms as of H. pylori, because of H. pylori, because of the ulcer and you get reflux signs, now they might give you an antacid that you might take for a year or two years, and then that depletes more iron for malabsorption. So all these things can interplay, and you can have more than one of these conditions that can create iron loss, okay? So, when we look into different signs and symptoms, when we have a patient come in, we have a questionnaire and we ask questions about how they're feeling, right? One of the telltale signs is fatigue. Now, fatigue is a general term, right? It could be due to chronic fatigue syndrome, thyroid issues, etc. But iron deficiency certainly can create fatigue. Pallor, right? Your skin becomes pale and white. Your nail beds become white. If you look under your eyelids, inside, it becomes white. So if you look at the patient's physical appearance, you can tell if they're pallid. Okay? Decrease in cognitive function. Let's say you start studying and about 10, 15 minutes into it, you become fatigued. You can't think as well. You can't absorb the material as well. The reason that happens is because of lack of blood flow. Studying takes enormous amount of energy, glucose and oxygen, to make it happen. So cognitive decline, if a child is struggling at school and they can't focus, right, you should actually check for iron deficiency in those children. Dizziness or lightheadedness, right? Dizziness because just lack of oxygen. And lightheadedness because you're not getting oxygen when you get up too quickly or you bend forward, you get up and you feel lightheaded. Right? It's oxygenation issues. Patient might feel cold all the time, right? They don't look cold and it's pretty warm outside. They can feel cold though, right? Again, that can be related to thyroid, etc. But when we feel cold and then you have cold hands and feet, right? First you gotta rule out thyroid, but you also gotta rule out issues with anemia or iron deficiency anemia. And then you can also get headaches because of lack of blood flow. Like things like migraines is, is a vascular uh, episode, right? Where it creates issues with the headaches. So iron deficiency can also create headaches because of lack of 
oxygenation or blood flow. Brittle hair and nails. Poor oxygenation, you're not getting the nutrients to where it needs to be, and your hair starts to fall out, get brittle, and your nails become brittle. In more advanced cases, you're gonna get spooning of the nails, right? So, right there, spooning of the fingernails. Canker sores can be a possibility with iron deficiency also, or sometimes vitamin D deficient, uh, vitamin C deficiencies. Uh, RLS, restless leg syndrome. So restless leg syndrome is very common with um, iron deficiency. Um, in other cases, it can be neurological um, because there are certain parts of the basal ganglion that play a part in restless leg syndrome. Increased heart rate. Your heart will pump hard, harder to get blood flow to the area because of lack of oxygen. So the heart const constantly pumps, trying to get more oxygen to a certain area. Shortness of breath, same thing, oxygenation issues, right? Pica, pica is a condition where a patient might crave um, dirt. They wanna eat dirt, right? Or ice cubes. They just wanna crave uh, these weird things because they have a lack of iron. Chest discomfort, all goes with heart rate and shortness of breath and chest discomfort. But you can see that there are so many signs and symptoms that can be associated with this. Right? In our office, when patients come in, we have a, a, a therm thermometer, a surface thermometer, where we check the temperature between their forehead, their hands, and their feet to determine you know, what kind of temperature difference is there. Right? Now, if your, your forehead is, let's say, 98 degrees and your hand is 95 degrees, but your foot is 80, you could have a circulation issue, you can have Raynaud's, you could have a thyroid problem, or you can have iron deficiency. Another way we can check is to check heart rate, obviously, in the office. If someone has a really rapid heart rate, cold hands and feet, then you can start to say, hey, maybe this patient has issues with iron, right? So those are simple ways we can check. And you can also get a pulse ox and look at the oxygen saturation, right? The oxygen saturation should be above uh, 98% and in some people it will not be, okay? So on my next video, we are actually gonna go talk about the lab tests that are necessary to determine someone, to determine if someone has iron deficiency, and then two, how do we rectify these matters, right? How, what natural therapies can we use? What supplements can we use for patients who have iron deficiency? Uh, and what underlying mechanisms can you correct in order to help with iron deficiency? So stay tuned for part two, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.